Hi, my name is Pierre Tarnot, I'm creative director on Absolver, and we're about to see some exclusive Absolver gameplay. So Absolver is an online action game with a focus on a very unique but accessible melee combat system. So the combat in Absolver is inspired by actual martial arts, and we wanted to create a system that was deep but accessible, and in which players could create their own custom combat choreographies. What we're seeing here is a tutorial is a tutorial map in the game. It's so it's very the early stage. The player has not been matchmaked with other players yet. The main part of the game is set in a small open world that is made of a dozen internet interconnected zones that the players can explore freely and in which he is he or she is matchmaked with other players seamlessly. So as you explore the world you will get to meet other people and build relationships with them. You can make friends, enemies, you can find mentors or students. A variety of relationships exist. And as we see here, sometimes you'll be walking in the world and suddenly somebody else is there. This however is a, is a single player tutorial because it's there to teach the player the basic game mechanics. So we wanted to do um, a combat system that is pretty accessible, so it's easy to pick up and play. Uh, it's a 3D real-time real -time combat system, but we added enough layers of depth, as we'll see, to have an actual competitive PvP experience. Because the end game of Absolver is becoming the best Absolver and fighting other others like you in PvP. So here we see that the special defense of that character. Uh, in Absolver, every player can choose a combat style, and each style has a different special ability. The combat style, this combat style, has the parry ability. So the character is about to parry, is able to parry attacks if he does it in the right timing, which I kind of messed up here, uh, but we'll see it a bit later on. So that's one mechanic. Another which we saw earlier is what we call perfect attack. So when you nail your attack, your successive attacks in the right timing, the character will flash golden, which makes the attack chain faster and stun the enemy a bit longer. So that's what we're seeing here. It's really an incentive to, to be in the flow of combat. Another game mechanic we're seeing here is the phase, which is canceling the buildup of an attack to trick your opponent into doing a feint. So that's this black ghost we can see at times. So this is especially useful against human opponents. If you faint, you get into this high-level mind game, kind of tricking your opponent into do doing a dodge or a parry. And that allows you to follow up really quickly with another attack while your enemy is recovering. So that's um, once you kind of get to know the attacks of your opponent, that is something that is very important to... Um, to tackle. So now we're going to see something that is really the core of Absolver, which is the stances and the combat deck edition. The idea is, in Absolver you have four different stances, uh, represented by uh, this diamond. In each stance you have a sequence of up to three attacks, which, which you see on top, and an alternative attack, which you see down. The idea is that every stance starts in one stance and goes into another one. So for instance, here we're going to make a sequence of attack that starts front left and that finishes front left. I can go into training mode and I'm going to see that if I chain these moves and I keep attacking, they loop on themselves. But I could go ahead and change that and, and decide that one stance actually goes to a different stance. Here, my two front stances both loop on themselves. But the idea is that any attack always chains smoothly with the attacks that follow. So everything is, everything is fluid, everything is dynamic, and the action basically never stops. The same system works with weapons. So the player can pull out weapons as temporary bonuses. And when you take out a weapon, it's just a whole different combat deck that is now accessible to you. Weapons do more damages, so but they can be 
temporary disarm, they can bonuses, you can get disarmed as we just saw here. So pulling a weapon in combat uh, usually gives an advantage to the player but can also be dangerous if your enemy gets very offensive, disarms you and picks up your weapon. So now we're going to see another part of, um, of the game. Which is a bit later, we were changing characters and we're going to focus now on the attack learning system, which is the core of how you will create your characters in Absolver. So in Absolver, as you explore the game world, you'll meet other enemies, whether they're NPCs or players. And when you fight somebody, whether it's an NPC or player, they attack you with an attack that you don't know, will learn that attack aggressively, which is what we're seeing here. Here I'm using the Absorb ability, which allows me to avoid being stunned or pushed back by an attack, and that allows me to counterattack right away. So I do receive damages, but if I counterattack, my damages are mitigated. And if, when I absorb, when I use my special ability on, a, on an attack, I'm going to learn it faster. So here I see that I've learned a bit out of six attacks and as you fight different enemies you will progressively learn more and more attacks and what you want to do is sometimes you don't want to beat an npc right away but rather try and use your special ability tactically on that npc in order to learn their moves better another mechanic this ties on is a social relationship between mentor students so what you can do when you meet another another player is ask them to become your mentor that way that player will be able to teach you their combat style and you'll be able to learn attacks faster than you would by fighting regular enemies so here i'm trying to absorb the enemy's attack not to kill it right away there we go I've learned some of three different attacks. Now this character here seems a bit more dangerous, so I guess I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be careful in the early stages of combat. Valid tactic is to kind of get to know the moves your, of your opponent, and that way you'll be able to counter the opponent more efficiently. This enemy has a combat style that has avoid as special ability. So the, my enemy can sidestep, duck under my attacks, he cannot parry up or, or absorb, but he can certainly make these very short and, and fluid avoidance moves that allows them to follow up really fast and attack me. Every time my attack is a bit too predictable, the enemy uh, ducks under it. So I've got to be careful here, maybe get some feints in, in order to get the edge in combat. Here I'm taking another stand, my back stand. I know that I have a low attack that allows me to beat that enemy. The enemy hasn't picked up my sword, so I can go go ahead and pick up that sword. My health is pretty low, so I'm going to heal up and keep on exploring that zone. So we're not going to show too much of that zone here, but we want before we jump to PvP, we wanted to show a bit of the customization system of Absolver. The general principle is that Every gear, every piece of equipment, and we've got nine different equipment categories in Absolver, every piece of equipment has specific par parameters of weight and protection. And so you're kind of making that trade-off between a weight that slows you down and protects you, protection that, uh, that gives you, mitigates damages, and sometimes uh, gear protects you better against blunt damage, sometimes gear protects you better against cut damage, which is typically the damage that you players get from weapons. So you're making these trade-offs as you equip, and all these equipment categories are fully compatible, so you're making gameplay choices as well as aesthetic choice, because the look of your character pretty much determines how others will perceive you and so it's um, important in an online game to kind of create your persona and show others what your character represents. Okay, so now what we're going to see is some player versus player combat. 
What's important to note is there are two forms of medieval combat in the game. Either what we're seeing here, which is players being match made together in the world, and these players have decided to fight, but these players could actually have teamed up and, uh, and go on into co-op PvE instead of fighting. But they chose to fight, and so here they are fighting. So we're gonna see different moments of a vari variety of fights. And look at the tactics involved. So this was this was an earthquake tower. What we can see are the the floating shards in the back of the characters allow them to use special weapons and powers. So you need shards to put out your weapon, but you can also use a shard to create a shockwave or other thing. So when, when confronted with an enemy who is a weapon, the good tactic is to be very offensive in order to try and disarm him, but that's not always possible. So we have two categories of weapons. This here are the war gloves. The character can change on the fly between war gloves and swords. And as you can see, he can also get disarmed again and my opponent can pick up his weapon. As we saw previously, it's very important to stay focused and keep these perfect attacks that make your character flesh golden, because that's how you get the faster edge in combat. Even though the moves that can be placed in the combat deck all belong to different combat styles, characters can choose to put in their combat deck moves of any style. So you can create something which is a mixed, a mixed style based on different attacks. Some attacks also have different properties. These attacks that turn you blue can absorb attacks. Some attacks can avoid. Some attacks can interrupt. That was nice parry done here, followed by a guard break attack. This is a guard break attack again. We see the character's hand flashing red, and he is done. Pick up his war gloves, absorbing a few attacks, and then jumping right in. But the other enemy has pulled out a weapon, and so the odds have shifted again. This is a Moonpike sword, it's a very fragile sword, so it can break pretty easily, but it inflicts heavy cut damage. But the opponent has pushed me back with a shockwave. Here we see a good use of the absorb power. Sometimes the fight takes place uh, near cliffs or precipices, and this creates a combat modifier because you, you cannot dodge in that direction. Some PvP maps exclusively focus on dangerous environments in which players may fall. That was a weapon break, followed up by a big absorb haymaker punch. That finishes up the enemy. So even if an enemy is dominating, as we can see here, if with a succession of absorbs, you can always chain your attacks faster. And if the enemy makes just one mistake, um, you can always uh, follow up and pick up in combat. The altar here is red because characters cannot interact with an altar when a fight is going on. And there we go. Weapon is picked up, and now the odds have shifted. It's very important to be able to use your special ability in the right timing. This is a move inspired by Capoeira. It's a very powerful kick. He pushes me away. So this will finish it that way. So what we see here are combats that take place in the worlds. But, as mentioned previously, fun combats take place into dedicated PvP arenas. So, 
from the game world, the player will be able to access special PvP game modes. So there is of course the one versus one duel, which currently is, is a best of five mechanic, but there is also three versus three game modes. And this concludes our demo. Thanks for watching.